I'll just give it's an energy plan. Energy plan is an energy system analysis tool, so we focus only on on the energy sector. Uh, and it's historically it's been going on for since uh, it was originally developed in Excel VBA. It's all the way back from the late 90s, actually, the early 2000s. So it's it's a quite old model, which is now exists as a standalone executable that you can download uh, for free. And the intention was and is to to model renewable energy systems. So there's a a quite uh, it's an aggregated model in terms of demand. So electricity demands are are specific, uh, are aggregated to 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 a few categories, and then else uh, there's a lot of details into renewable energies but also the district heating systems potentially and sector coupling so it has a lot of, of strength in terms of how many technologies it includes and what it's um, what it can do in terms of coupling different energy sectors so heating electricity transport and industry there's a lot of options for producing fuels and so on uh, and utilizing excess heat in the district heating system so there's a lot of focus on, on renewable energy and and heating in the and cooling in the model um, it simulates the entire energy system in a year uh, on an hourly basis, so it balances the hourly and it demands with the, with the hourly production profiles. And it can do this in two ways. Either it does it in a technical simulation where we basically have an algorithm that tries to, to minimize uh, fuel use in combination with uh, exports and, and maybe more specifically imports. So we try to optimize using local production facilities, which means we are able to run the model actually without any economic inputs if we need to. The other way we can operate it is based on a marginal electricity price principle. So basically operating the units first that allows for the cheapest uh, operation costs of the system. Uh, the model can also handle investment costs and are able to output uh, total economic uh, parameters for that. Uh, normally we make it on, on a national model uh, but it can work both on European levels and also on, on local levels. We have city models in this in this tool. We have a lot of different countries. You can find a lot of examples online on our website, uh, energyplan.eu. Um, yeah, it's developed and maintained by us here in the Alba University Group. It's it's me and Henrik Lund, Professor Henrik Lund, that are the main developers of the tool right now. So if there are any requests or comments, you are always free to send them to us and we'll try and update it. Uh, it's programmed in Delphi Pascal, not because that was a choice we made, but it's because that's the help we can get from a local company that also operates a model in that. And else you can download it and run it from your computer. And as I said, it's an hourly simulation with a focus on system and sector integration, uh, being able to use storage uh, from all the different sectors. Um, the main inputs you have to give to the model are, are energy demands, capacities and power plants, efficiencies, and then time series for demands and renewable energy to, to allow for this hourly um, simulation. Uh, and you can also then add and include investment cost, CO2 prices, fuel cost, operation cost, uh, emission factors for, for different types of, of, of fossil fuels. Uh, so you can, in principle, add on the details you need uh, in to operate the model you only need you can say the the first four i gave that's like mandatory you need and then depending on what kind of outputs you want to to get um, you can um, you can include more and more details to your model and then it outputs based on, on the first uh, one it outputs energy balances uh, for all parts of the energy system so we can track how Electricity basically is converted into heating, for instance, and then stored in a, in a storage and utilized again in another hour and how it that would replace potentially the use of a, of a fossil fuel boiler or power station or something like this. Um, it does this for each technology and then based on that, we are then able to calculate CO2 emissions and now we're also able to calculate actually other uh, types of emissions as well, the NOx and, and particles and so on. Um, and the total annual cost, operation costs, uh, the fuel consumptions uh, and different things. So that's some some key inputs and outputs. And, and you can do this very simply for 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 a limited part of the energy system, or you can you can go into to the big task of modeling uh, basically everything. Um, one of the key things with Energy Plan is it has a graphical user interface, so it's quite easy for compared maybe to other models, but it still takes a little time to learn it, obviously. But 
but it's it's a rather easy to go in here and then you can you can pick what demands you want to model and how you want to supply it so here i just show the variable renewable energy where you can model different types of of, of uh, energy technology you have some wind energy for instance in the first one uh, where you can define how much capacity you have and then what kind of time series and you can even correct that if you don't have detailed time series. I think this was more of an, an issue earlier in the model than it is now with all the data available on, on for instance, renewable energy out there. And then you can output the model's uh, results uh, as a quick screen output. You can export it to Excel or, or other spreadsheet type formats. You can, you can print it as a PDF. We have like a documentation directly you can do as well. Um, so just quickly to show what kind of results we normally use to do this. This is a a Danish scenario where we try to, to model uh, the Danish energy transition where we are able, and obviously, un unfortunately, this is in Danish because that's what we wrote it in originally. But basically, we can then output Sankey diagrams and we can make that from the results. Uh, we can see CO2 uh, emissions, uh, CO2 emissions we have here where we made three models, one for 2020, a current state of business as usual, as it is today, and then we have a 2030 and a 2045 result. So there's three different models. We are then uh, showing a track of how we do CO2 emissions. So you can say our tool doesn't automatically um, develop a pathway towards, let's say, CO2 neutrality or something else. Instead, we as researchers or modelers have to define what kind of capacities uh, do we do we believe is possible? How would that then, the model will then tell us, well, if we do this kind of system configuration, what would be the consequences from it? So you can say in the sense we have to do all the decisions basically as researchers and with the model are not, you can say, deciding what kind of technology we are in, investing in. We have to do that. Uh, and we also did it for Europe here where we have, uh, where we first tried to replicate some of the prime scenarios uh, and then doing that in the energy plan to see how close uh, we can get. And then also trying to then do this concept of smart energy Europe where, and smart energy system we're looking a lot into with with sector coupling and system integration and utilizing district heating and cooling and 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 the energy efficiency you can gain from using excess heat sources. But these are just some examples of what we did. And I don't want to put in all the references with papers that are working on this and using this. There's so many, but the first the two couple of references I have here are like a review paper which shows a lot of cases that it's been used for, so you can check into that. And then there's also the methodology paper and then just two references for the for the model I showed. Thank you.